I would like to share with you about a testimony of a girl who recently traveled to our ministry in South Africa. She traveled a really far way from the one to the other end of South Africa to come and receive deliverance for she believed that she was struggling with demons. I wanted to use this testimony to illustrate to you the dangers that we face today and has always, when we, what we have always faced in terms of witchcraft. Whether it is black magic, white magic, occultism, Satanism, Luciferism, whether it is um, uh, many branches of uh, the new age, whether it is um, Ouya boards or many kind of spiritual games that are played that are rooted in, in witchcraft or whether it is ghosts and ghost hunting, whether it is horoscopes, what, there are many avenues, whether it is yoga, there are many avenues that we need to be so careful about. And if you have participated or are participating in any of these things, I want you to watch this video and pay attention to it. So this girl was heavily involved in African uh, witchcraft. And even though this is African witchcraft, it is going to be applicable to all types of witchcraft, whether it is in the Western or the Eastern parts of the world or in Africa or in the Southern parts, wherever in the world, the, the premise of witchcraft remains the same. Its form looks a little different. It looks a little different on the outside, but at the end of the day, all forms of witchcraft have the same root. And I want to submit to you the same entities behind them as well. This particular girl was born into a family that practiced witchcraft and it is a very common thing in Africa in many African traditions that this happens. She practiced horoscopes. Um, she was um, oftentimes a part of ancestor worship or in other words, worshiping of the dead or worshiping of um, any, any kind of spirits, right? Um, she was also involved in um, blood rituals animal sacrifices and the like of that. Then they also often went to witch doctors, which are also called Sangomas here in Africa. And these witch doctors would help them with their issues. They would go to them to for healing. They would go to them for um, financial troubles. They, they would go to them for um, really anything that we would actually um, need help with in life. Right. And so the most interesting part is that at the same time, and this is often the case, she was a Christian. She thought she thought she, she was following God in a correct manner. She thought that the way she was doing things is giving glory to God. In fact, many of the things that she was involved in was actually done at a church or, or, or by pastors and then pastors was they, they They oftentimes kind of uh, encourage the various forms that I'm going to be discussing in this video for her to undergo. It's just quite shocking. But in these visitations to Sangomas and doing various rituals, they went to lakes, they went to rivers, they slaughtered animals like chickens. They took the blood. They often they, they even drank the blood and many such rituals were done. All of these things were done, like I mentioned, with pure intentions by her and her family. They simply wanted freedom. They wanted help. They wanted things to go well. They actually just wanted blessing at the end of the day. And don't we all that is something that we all desire. And that is why often that is oftentimes what we try and get out of spirituality, if you will. But all these things that she involved herself in, instead of giving a blessing, seemingly initially, it quickly turned into cursings. Soon her family started struggling financially at a degree that is, was unprecedented, where things were just going wrong and not just financially, but in every area of the family's life, things just started going wrong. So there are multiple reasons for why people go into witchcraft or occultism or new age or any of the branches thereof. And really, it comes down to three primary re motivations, usually what I found. And the one is really that oftentimes they are Christians or they grew up in a Christian family and they don't see the power. They don't see the change and they don't have the patience. And then they would rather go to something that seems like a quicker avenue to getting whatever they wanted to get from God. 
And so oftentimes this, the reason for this is that they're in a church or in an assembly or in a place where the, it is, there is good teaching maybe, but the Holy Spirit of God, where the power is, where the love is, where the healing is, where the freedom is, is not actively involved in the church or in, in that. And so because they don't see the power of God work, they would go and they, they try and settle for a counterfeit. Because brothers and sisters, we have been made as spiritual beings. We have been made as people who desire spiritual things because that is what we are. We have a spirit. And so we it is by nature that we will seek these things. And if the church does not provide the Holy Spirit, if the church does not provide the power that we seek, if the church does not provide that that access to a relation, a true relationship with God, but rather empty, powerless, just religious works, then it can easily become so powerless. And, and we we don't have a relationship with God anyway. It becomes easy to shift to something that is more that seems more accessible and more powerful even. Furthermore, oftentimes people have a relationship with God, but they don't have patience and they 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 are they're asking God to come and help and help. But then because God has his time and God has a perfect good will for our lives and he desires things to go well with us. But because we don't trust him because of all of that, we start looking other other avenues. We start going this or that way. <clears throat> we start seeing where can we find freedom quicker? And we start get, then going into things like witchcraft. Another reason that people go into witchcraft is because of a they want to get clean. They want to get cleansed. They want to, like I mentioned, get something like freedom. But it's kind of ironic because there are brown sisters. You need to understand there is two kingdoms in this world. Every person and every spirit in this world belongs to one of two kingdoms. There is a creator of heaven and earth. Only one creator, one God who created heaven and earth. There is not many. There is one source of all of life. And that God has, has a love for us. We are his children. He has made us and he even went as far as to come and die for us and to, for us to get saved. So we would not die in our sin and on, on, on our unholiness because this God, Yahweh, he is so holy that it is we cannot come to him if we are unholy, if we don't, we aren't clean. And so God desires for us to. <laughs> it's so funny how my voice is going away while I'm doing this teaching about witchcraft. <clears throat> Father, I thank you right now. I command us to leave in the name of Yeshua. I thank you for a brand new voice now. And so these two kingdoms, the one is of light, the one is of life of the, God, the creator of the universe who loves us. And the other one it is not. It is about the ruler of, 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 of darkness. His name is Satan, Lucifer, and he rules darkness. He rules evil. He rules the, the spiritual realm where there is evil. He desires um, death. He desires bad things to come upon us. He does not desire for us. I just want to thank God for my voice. It's back. <laughs> he does not desire uh, for us to prosper. You see, God is here to make us prosper. He is here to bring freedom. Brothers and sisters, uh, if we partake in any kind of other, anything else, anything other, any kind of other spirituality, uh, whether it's a different religion, whether it is, it is even such something like yoga or Buddhism or, or any other religion that, that does not follow Yeshua as the Messiah, Jesus Christ as the Messiah, we are following a counterfeit religion of God. We are not following the one true God can see enemy. The Satan has he cannot show himself the way he is because he is so evil. that No one wants him. He is so disgusting that no one would want to partake in his evil ways. Well, most people wouldn't at least. But so what he does is he comes and he makes many things look good. He makes many things look uh, attractive, makes many things look like it can give us freedom. But it's a counterfeit. There's only one thing that can give freedom. And that is 
the kingdom of God. And so the ironic thing is when we go into witchcraft and we start consulting the day, we start going to all these other things. What we're really doing is we're trying to get rid of if we have issues, if we think we have a demon or if we think we have something like this girl, she thought she had um, issues with demons or anything and, and stuff like that, evil spirits. And then she went to a witch doctor to get rid of the witchcraft. <laughs> or she went, you know, she tried to sacrifice an animal so that she can get rid of us. But that's actually the the sacrifice that caused more, gave more authority to the to Satan's kingdom over her life. And brothers and sisters, by the time she got to us, she had probably around 50 to 100 demons that were that were oppressing her. But see, at the end of the day, we also just want spirituality without the responsibility. We want to be able to be spiritual because we were made to be spiritual, right? And we have this inward desire to do that, but we don't want the responsibility of being obedient to how God asked us to live. You see, God loves us so much that he gave us um, uh, rules, just like your when you live in your mother's house or under under your mom and dad's roof, they're going to tell you be home at 9 p.m. Honey, when you go out tonight, because we want you to be safe. That rule was there to protect you. That rule is there to bless you. And so similarly, God has given us rules and those rules are there to protect us, to bless us and give us life. See, he loves us so much. He doesn't want anything to happen to us. But when we go and we stay out late at night past our bedtime and we're under our mom and dad's roof and something goes wrong, you know, it, it was our fault because we were disobedient to what they told us to do to keep us safe. And in the same way, God has done that for us. He has told us what to do to keep us safe. But if we go and we're disobedient and we don't do what he asked us to do, we are bringing cursings on ourselves. And so I want to ask you to look at your heart. Are you, you know, if you're doing any of these things, if you're partaking in anything like that, is it because you just don't want the responsibility? You just don't want to be uh, to live right, morally right, to do the right thing or w w what is it? And so as this girl came for deliverance, it was quite amazing because, um, you know, when I saw her the first time, I received a vision from God immediately and I saw her heart. I saw her with her heart and I saw God come <clears throat> taking her heart and then go, coming and taking this black stuff out of her heart. And <clears throat> it was crazy because when I came to her and I um, go, 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 come on. Ellie. It was quite amazing because as I came to take a seat next to her and I asked her, you know, what's what's wrong? What's up? Um, can I, you know, how, what can I do for you? And she, the first thing she said was she's getting, she's been having heart attacks, heart attacks. Okay. And, and immediately I knew I had this vision about her heart. God saying, I'm going to restore her heart. And then immediately I just told her, well, let me tell you something. God is going to heal you right now. And I was so excited because I knew that God was going to do this. And I, pray, I started praying for her heart and immediately started manifesting a demon. And as she managed to start manifesting a demon, we ca I casted the demon out of her. We, we prayed for her. We prayed um, continuously for her. And we casted another demon out, another demon out, another demon out. And we casted countless demons out of her where we literally lost count of everything that she has been getting and picking up throughout the years because she's been tr she's been going to try and fix her demons with demons. She's been trying to fix the evil with evil. She's been trying witchcraft to get rid of the witchcraft. She's been trying one witchcraft to get rid of another kind of witchcraft. Because see, brothers and sisters, there is only two kinds of uh, kingdoms in this world. And you can't get of the, you can't get of the, the, the witchcraft of the witchcraft because the kingdom of darkness is with the kingdom of darkness. Kingdom of darkness will not cause our kingdom of darkness. Only the kingdom of light where Jesus Christ and God is, is the only kingdom that can cast out the kingdom of darkness. A demon cannot leave by any other means except by the name of Jesus Christ. What demons can do, however, is they can try and, 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 and act like and they're so deceptive and that they try and, and act like they're better. Like you would go to a witch doctor and you would say, I have this issue, please. Can you help me? And then when they do the ritual, that demon that actually caused that issue would take a step back for a second. And then another demon comes and that demons brings 
it brings more cursings and now you've got your old issue and you've got new issues the old issue is only suppressed for a little while and then a year later the old issues back the new issues are back and everything gets back at the same time because all the demons now have authority and they want to kill you see they're not your friends in the beginning they'll act like they're friends when you go and you consult with evil spirits or any kind of spirits it's not jesus himself if you try and consult with them they will act like your friends they will act like they have good intentions they will act like they have good things in store for you but at the end of the day all they will try and do is oppress you because then later they come and they try and they and they come and they backstab you they come and they pull the rug from rug from underneath you and they try and kill you and whether it is physically right now or whether it is to kill you and in, in, in terms of keeping you away from god and making you eternally separate from God because without Jesus there's no one no one will see God without Yeshua no one will be able to come into his presence because you're not holy and you need him to make you clean in addition to these heart pains that this girl had she had nightmares uh, very bad night terrors that were like absolutely demonic she had these un involuntary movements especially when she was praying she had many kinds of weird symptoms like this. Um, uh, many other people have also things like sp split personalities, anger, outbursts, and things similar to that. And so by the end of the session, when, when she was almost completely delivered, she was laying on the floor and she just started speaking in tongues. And in, when she started speaking in tongues, I, I, Father granted me an interpretation of her tongues. And I heard her say, amongst many other things, that, oh, the Lord has delivered me. Glory to his name. And at the end of the day, it was so amazing because this girl received such incredible freedom that her heart aches, her heart attacks, everything, all her medical issues were completely healed. She was completely delivered therefrom. She had, she had deliverance from many issues in her life. And it was so amazing because even uh, when I saw her a day and two, two days later or so, she was a totally different person. She had a new face. You could even, she smiled like she's never smiled before. She lit up with a peace and a freedom that was just on her. That, and this is something that is so, it always happens. It is so amazing to see. And it is just evidence of how God delivers. You see, brothers and sisters, a demon will not take away your true sickness. A demon will not truly heal you. A demon will not give you the relationship of God your spirit yearns for a demon cannot touch what God can give God wants to give freedom but you need to get on your knees submit to him and recognize that you are less you need to recognize that there is no use in holding on to pride there's no use in holding on to what you want for your life it is about dying to yourself and letting God have authority in your life because his calling for your life is the only thing that will ever satisfy you and make you happy and content in who he has made you to be you were made for a purpose if you don't accomplish a purpose in your life you will forever be lacking and feel lost in Isaiah 47, God talks about those who partake in uh, uh, witchcraft. And he says the following, But evil shall come upon you, which you will not know how to charm away. Disaster shall fall upon you, for which you will not be able to atone. And ruin shall come upon you suddenly, of which you know nothing. Stand fast in your enchantments and your many sorceries with which you have labored from your youth. Perhaps you may be able to succeed. Perhaps you may inspire terror. You are wearied with your many counsels. Let them stand forth and save you. Those who divide the heavens, who gaze at the stars, who at the new moons make known what shall come upon you. Behold, they are like stubble. The fire consumes them. They cannot deliver themselves from the power of the flame. No call for warming oneself is this. No fire to sit before. Uh, when you go for horoscopes or tarot card readings or anyone who's predicting the future or anything like that, when you go to a witch doctor, uh, when you go into Satanism, when you go into New Age, when you go into paganism, your gods cannot save you. In fact, the, those who you counsel, who counsel you cannot even save themselves for they will all burn. They will all not make it. How will they save you if they cannot save themselves? I want to submit to you that God is the only one who can save and He wants to save you. He wants to bless you and bring you new life. But you need to put your hope and trust in Him. And so I'd like to ask you that if you have been part 
in your past or are part of any kind of witchcraft today, I would like to ask you please to go and say and cry out to Jesus. Let him save you. He is the only one that can start this process of true freedom for you. You will not be able to find it anywhere else. God's word forbids witchcraft. He, he forbids talking and consulting with the dead. He forbids um, uh, doing any kind of sacrifices in your backyard, sacrificing chickens. He forbids the drinking of blood, such as we saw this girl do. He forbids many of these things. He forbids looking at the stars and trying to predict the future. He forbids it all because he knows it will bring cursings upon us. He knows it will not bring us freedom. Reach out to him and he will reach out to you for his waiting. And God bless you and keep you, shine his face upon you, lift up his counts upon you. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel if this teaching has blessed you, as well as like this video and share it with your friends for those who may need it and who it will bless.